Hello there, Thomas and John. I haven't made a video in a little while. Um, this uh, this van doesn't have a, uh, a player, so I'm not going to be able to play your song. But I think I finally figured out a way to record it so I can send it back to you so I can learn that stupid thing. I do like your songs, by the way. So anyway, I am out... Where the heck am I at? I am out near Carroll, Michigan. As, as you can see... It's pretty, uh, pretty rural, a very country. A lot of crops, a lot of stuff like that. A lot of crops, that's uh, with that corn. So this is the uh, end of June, it's almost July, it'll be July 4th. July 4th in our country is when we celebrate, um, we celebrate the 4th of July, which is when we, uh, that was our independence from England. Um, we had a Revolutionary War back in 1700s, late 1700s, and in 1776. Uh, um, well, anyway, I'm not as up in my history as I probably should be, but uh, anyway, uh, we started our own country here. Uh, we decided to break away from the British, and we had a war, and we won. I imagine having the British here, uh, look, there's a lot of utility trucks, um, having the British come over there's a lot of supply lines and things like that and I can't imagine that would be too easy in the uh, late uh, 1700s so anyway England lost we won and we got our independence so we became the uh, United States well, we only had uh, 13 colonies then and then since then we spread all over the all over the original United States all the way over to you know from the East Coast from where we started with the original colonies to um, all the way over to California. And of course that didn't happen overnight. That took years and years and years. But uh, Louisiana Purchase, that kind of stuff. If you ever want to come to the United States and become a citizen, you're going to have to learn all this stuff a little bit better than what I'm telling you right now. But it's been a long day. <laughs> okay. So anyway, um, this guy done installing cameras at a, at a job and uh, the dispute with the neighbors is uh, that well, their livestock, their cows, uh, the next door neighbors keep getting loose and getting into the people's yards and they want that to stop, so put some cameras in for them. I can't tell you where, or when, or who, because that's the nature of my business. You know, I gotta keep that kind of on the down low, but uh, anyway. So we're just driving and I figured, uh, seems I work by myself most of the time, keep me company, just. Uh, by the way, if anybody's watching this, wonder how I'm filming, and uh, I have both hands on the wheel, and I am not looking through a lens monitor or anything like that. I am just looking um, a little bit, you know, through the, you know, through the thing. It's a lot easier to do than it looks. So no worries. I'm not going to crash. I'm not taking my life in my hands. I'm not texting. I'm just talking. I'm talking and holding the phone at the same time. So I've got both hands on my wheel, and everything's good. So anyway. Anyway, this is kind of like where I live. Uh, my neighborhood is uh, very rural, just like this one. I lived in the city for quite a while. I lived in Detroit on and off. As, uh, well, when I was a little kid, I lived in Detroit. Um, I lived on the west side of Detroit, and it was a really, really nice place back then. Oh, look, there's trains. I don't know if you can see that. Um, so back in the, well, what happened was is in 1967, there were the 67 riots. Um, there was a lot of prejudice and a lot of segregation. Uh, the black people um, had had enough. There was one incident at what's called a blind pig, which is basically a, a, you know, an illegal bar set up. And uh, the police came down on the people pretty hard. There was a, a fight and, and things got really ugly and it ended up that uh, there were riots and unfortunately, they burned a lot of their own properties, they burned a lot of stores, and the city really never recovered from it. Um, when I was a kid, um, I lived on the west side of Detroit, and it was actually a pretty nice place to be. Uh, safe neighborhood, very Polish, you could walk to the store. I mean, I was like five or six years old, and I could walk a couple blocks over to the store, no problem. I had no problem at all. And uh, anyway, 
Um, I recently visited that part of Detroit, and I gotta tell you, it's a very sad state of affairs now. It's in bad shape. Half the houses that I knew are gone. The one that bothers me the most, I think, is my uncle's old house. My uncle Tony lived at, uh, you know, right next to us. We were at 8045 Warwick Street. Uh, he lived right next door. It was a brick home. A um, lot of good memories. A lot of first time stuff that happened for me there, you know. Um, and I just, we were kids, we were growing up next door. And we moved out after things got, you know, were getting kind of bad. Um, they wanted to, I think I might have mentioned this before. They, what happened was, is, um, the Mayor Coleman Young was a very bad person and a bad mayor and a crook. And anyway, um, there was a, a busing program. And what was going to happen is they were going to, instead of the, the normal school that I could go to that I'd walk to in kindergarten, which is like, or first grade here. Um, kindergarten means, in German, it means a children garden. I once had to very politely correct a kindergarten teacher who called it uh, a kidney garden or kindergarten or something like that. She is completely unaware of that fact. But anyway, um, so what happened was uh, we decided that, uh, my parents decided that the busing just wasn't for us. Um, they wanted me to go to school in the projects. Now what the projects are is this place was called Herman Gardens and it's gone now. But the projects is a place where people who, uh, you know, people that are poor, it's low, low, low cost housing. Well, that's what it's supposed to be. Well, what it ends up being is a place full of drugs and criminals and, you know, basically a lot of bad stuff going on. And, uh, so my parents were kind of open-minded and they went down to check it out and they said I probably wouldn't last a week there. So they, we moved about a year after that and I went for one year to Catholic school, which is a whole nother rant. Um, I didn't have a lot of bad things happen. I didn't have, I didn't meet too many nuns. I didn't mess with me at all. It was the first grade. I didn't have any bad experiences, you know, but a lot of people have. A lot of people have had bad experiences with Catholic schools, especially old Catholic schools. I just heard about today, actually. A uh, uh, guy's brother was left-handed, and the nuns would, like, crack his knuckles with a metal ruler uh, every time he tried to use his left hand, because apparently being left-handed was frowned upon back then. I I'm not sure why, but anyway. So, we moved out of Detroit. So now the neighborhood's bad. My uncle's old house... He eventually finally moved and sold the house off. Brick home, you know, kind of small, maybe a thousand square feet. Three bedrooms, two downstairs, one upstairs, one big one upstairs. De typical Detroit bungalow. Um, it Last I heard, uh, they were cooking meth in it. And they had uh, set the place on fire, burned a hole in the roof, and they boarded it up. And I'm not sure if it's still there now or not. I went by there uh, last year to see and there's just nothing left of the old neighborhood. All the neighbors are gone. Everybody I knew who was ever there is gone. Um, you know, Uncle Tony's house is in terrible shape. And it's really sad. I mean, this is a place where people, like, you know, they spent their life savings and put these houses together and, and, and took care of them and, and had gardens and, and, and wonderful things going on and, you know, a nice backyard. He even grew corn in the backyard. He had a vegetable garden, all kinds of stuff. Now it's a burned out meth house. And that makes me sad. It really does. That one for me in particular, because my parents' first house is actually next door, and it actually doesn't look too bad in shape, but uh, it just, you know, makes you sad. So, what can you do? I got tired of living there because, you know, I got tired of being robbed. I got tired of having to lock everything up all the time, trying to hold on to 50 cents worth of junk, you know. I'm not going to fight the whole neighborhood. But, whatever. It was a long time ago. Things are finally starting to look up down there. And parts of Detroit are pretty terrible. They really are. But we got a new mayor, and he's trying to make a difference. Uh, mayor Mike Duggan, and I'm seeing some stuff getting done down there. Um, been watching a guy named Shea Woods. I've mentioned it before. Uh, he's got a show called The Shea Show. It's on YouTube. You can check it out. Uh, people from all over the world are investing in the cheap properties in Detroit. And he is... That man is personally responsible for fixing up Detroit one house at a time and I think that's great I think the work I support the work that he's doing 
He seems like a really good guy. His team seems like a bunch of good folks, you know, Lori and Dave, and I watch that show all the time. And I'm glad. I'm glad to see these houses getting fixed up, and I'm see, you know, getting some renters in them and, and getting some place done. I don't have that ability. So, what can I do? So, Detroit's been down and out for a long, long time, and I've had no choice but to watch it slowly decay over the all, you know, I've been in this world 45 years now, and just, what can, you know, I can't fight everybody, you know, I mean, what can I do? So now, things are, people are, they're spending money in Detroit, they're fixing things up. They're, they're trying to get, they, they just, they, they were changing out all these street lights down, down in Detroit. They had all these street lights were out for years and years. And they're, they're adding LED um, um, street lights. And they, they're, they, they're well over changing 500 a month. Instead of putting copper wire in, because all the junkies and perverts and weirdos, like, they steal the copper wire and then, you know, trade it in to get drug money. Well, they're putting them aluminum wire. Aluminum wire is cheaper and they don't steal it. Because it's really not worth as much as copper. So that's cool. I-96 is one of our major uh, freeways down there. And that place is, uh, it's getting fixed. I-96 used to make the news back in the 90s because chunks of it were falling off and endangering people's lives. You know, you'd see like a story where a big chunk of concrete like fell right through the, the windshield of some lady's car or right through the sunroof or some other lady's car. And, that whole freeway is completely shut down down there, and they're fixing all of it. So there's some good things finally starting to happen down there. You know, if we, I'll tell you what, the only thing that's going to save that city, other than you know trying to clean up the blight, they're trying to clean up. They finally took a, a uh, they finally took a toll about how many different houses, like how many businesses and houses and blighted properties. I think it's 75,000 that are all like, you know, they need to come down. And they're all they're they're done. They they can't use them anymore. So that all needs to come out. Well, there's like seventy five thousand properties, I think, is what they counted. Well, all of that's coming out. It's going to take a long time. The city's broke. They're trying to you know some of the creditors are trying to uh, maybe get them to sell off some of the artwork in the Detroit Institute of Arts, our you know our art gallery, which is world class and it's absolutely amazing, by the way. Um, but they're trying to protect it. They're trying to make sure that that doesn't happen. Um, so hats off to Mayor Duggan. He's he's trying to do a good job. Our last mayor was Mayor Kwame Kilpatrick. Now, I want to say something about the people of the city of Detroit. For a long time, I was very disappointed with their choice of mayor. Mayor Coleman Young was a terrible person and a criminal. I mean, he did some good things for the city, but he did a lot of bad things and a lot of bad things. And he is personally responsible for my family moving out of there with his whole stupid busing program and everything else, all those shenanigans that he pulled. The city went, in, on his watch, down from bad to worse. So anyway, they've had a couple of good mayors. We had Mayor, uh, let's see, Mayor Archer. Uh, that man definitely tried. As soon as, uh, as soon as, and now Coleman Young had to actually die before he was uh, voted out of office. Voted Archer in, he lasted one term. But, the Eight Mile Bridge over by Southfield. Now that's actually the bridge, if you ever see this, uh, this dumb show called, uh, Hardcore Pawn. By the way, Hardcore Pawn is sort of the Jerry Springer show of pawn shows. I mean, we've got pawn stars out there in Las Vegas, and, and what is that? That's like education and humor and and oh let me call you know and they got this historical guy he can tell you all this historical facts about this that and the other and all this stuff what do you got on, on hardcore porn you got a bunch of morons down there beating the crap out of each other out of 50 cents you know can i get a 50 cents for this watch no you can't okay fine and then uh, you know and then there's a bunch of swearing and it's just like it's so stupid i hate that show i've been to that pawn shop you that them guys oh my god forget it that 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 is a that is a black eye and a booger on, on the face of Detroit. It, that show is terrible. It's just terrible. Anyway, hey look, this old burnout school. Well, it's not burnout. It's just abandoned. You know why that school is abandoned? Because they built a bigger one, <laughs> not because of blight. So anyway, there's a lot of different things going on down there. There's a lot of bad stuff still going on, but there's a lot of good stuff going on. Um, let's see. Mayor Kwame Kilpatrick. Bad guy. 
we thought he was going to do, he was a young guy, he was the youngest mayor ever uh, elected. We thought that, I didn't vote for him, but they thought that he was going to do a lot of good things. He did. What he did was he stole all the money and then he only gave out like contracts to people that paid him off. And then friends of the family, and he gave friends of the family like jobs they didn't deserve and a lot more money than they should have had, and that kind of junk. Well, he got, he got, um, he was jailed over racketeering terms and uh, failed to, I don't know what all they got him on, but basically they proved he was a criminal. Well, he decided that he was going to fool around with the, with the, the judicial system, and he didn't he had to pay all this money back and he kept saying no no i'm broke I, I can't afford it i can't afford it meanwhile he's in texas living like a millionaire in a giant house well they didn't go for that the judge said hey man you know you got to pay this or you're going to jail and he kept fooling around and fooling around and fooling around well guess what they found all this other stuff about him and now he's going to be in jail for about i think i don't know 20 something years i mean he's not going to get out till he's an old man now so that's what corruption will get you. You know, meanwhile, we had Dave Bing. Dave Bing, I think, was a little overwhelmed. I feel like he was a good man. Good mayor. Uh, he tried. Um, he was voted out this last time, or I don't remember if he ran or not, but now they have Mayor Mike Duggan. Mayor Mike Duggan is the first white mayor that we've had since, like, I don't know, what, the late 60s or something like that. Um, but they voted him in. I think the city of Detroit is ready for a change. You know, unfortunately, in the city of Detroit, in certain areas, there's a lot of prejudice against, well, let's face it, white folks. They don't want white folks living in their neighborhood. I hate to say it like that. I'll probably get some flack for it, but it's absolutely true. I know a lot of people, a lot of black people have experienced prejudice, you know, with white folks, especially up in these kind of areas up in the country, you know, where it's like, you know, we don't want these black folks living around here. You know, I understand that. And believe me, I've run into those kind of rednecks, and it always makes me angry. But anyway... But I've experienced the exact opposite in certain neighborhoods of Detroit where I've been threatened because I'm white or the people that, you know, I don't know. It's a very prejudiced same thing. Well, fortunately, that's not the case with everybody. And I think if everybody learns to live together, because there's a lot of different people down there now. There's Mexican people, there's white people, there's Asian people, there's black people. Obviously, there's black people, but, you know, live together. The only thing I think is going to save that city is a bit of unity. Neighborhoods working together. You know, a lot of young guys get into drugs and selling drugs and things like that down there. Because there's no opportunity. Well, the only thing that's going to save the city besides that is the youth. Say, uh, you know, education, opportunity, jobs. See, what happens is, a lot of times, is uh, you, get into a, you get in with a bad crowd when you're young. And a lot of times you ain't got any choice. You have to join the gang, otherwise they'd be crap out of you every day. It's the only way to save yourself. So anyway, get in, you start selling drugs, you make a little money, you get caught. You get caught, you go to jail. You go to jail, you do time. When you get out, who's going to hire you? Nobody. Nobody's going to hire you. And if you don't have family to stay with, now you're homeless. So what do you do? Sell drugs again? Live on the street? Maybe you're lucky enough to, you know... You know, move in with a relative, and then what do you do? I've seen it a million times. I've actually known people like that, where it's like they got out for a little while. You know, I've worked with people like that. Not at this job, because, of, you know, I've, this is burglar alarms that I do, but, you know, other jobs in the past, landscaping and stuff. And it's like, you know, they think, well, maybe if I could just do one more quick score, at least kind of get some money to get me on my feet. I'm trying to live on minimum wage, and I can't make it. And it's like, don't do it, man. Don't do it. Because you're going to be right back where you were right back in jail again and that, that just I don't know it's a vicious cycle I wish I could you know you do something about it keep it from happening it happens out here too these little towns aren't innocent they may look like it they, but this might look like a sleepy little town with nothing going on but the truth is there's there's drugs out here too there's a lot of heroin in these areas that's why I've had a lot of break-ins out you know this area and a lot of the areas around and stuff I mean, you wouldn't think it, but heroin has made a big, big return. I don't know what they think this is. Like, the what is this, the 1990s, the grunge era, or, you know, or, what is this, the 70s all over again? I mean, what the heck is going on? Heroin. 
don't look, don't do heroin, okay? Life is too short. That drug sucks. Don't even try it. Don't snort it. Don't let some idiot talk you into injecting it. It's just bad news. If you're going to have a party, have a party that's not going to make you ill and sick and, and holes in your skin and, and all kinds of stupid shit like that. I mean, nobody needs that. Don't do heroin. Don't try heroin. Don't even go there. It's just no good. No good will ever come out of it. It's just, even even if the buzz is the best thing in the world, which I have to take somebody's word for it, I've never tried it, you know, it, nothing good will come of it. And you're going to end up on the street. And out here, if you end up on the street, well, shit, man, you could die. There ain't nothing out here. <laughs> so anyway. So anyway, back to Detroit. Detroit is trying to make a comeback. And I think it will. I really do. I think if all the dumb stuff could kind of die down and the big cool stuff could happen, they got the riverfront. I haven't seen the riverfront walk yet. I understand it's quite quite beautiful. It's all down. And then we got like breweries going up and what I'd really like to see is some of the old places if they're still there. Like I don't know if the Grandy Ballroom is still there, but you know, I'd like to see that come back. Some of the historic places that are so beautiful that need so much work. And it could, just a matter of time. Oh, well, listen to this. And thanks to Mayor Mike Duggan. I don't know if this is going to happen, but it's supposed to. Um, one of the most iconic buildings in Detroit is the, uh, the old train station. The old train station closed up in the 80s, and it's been a giant eyesore ever since then. Um, it's a big, giant, abandoned building that's right near the freeway, and all the windows are missing out of it. And it's just this old 1930s structure that used to be really beautiful on the inside, like Grand Central Station in New York, and now it's just terrible. I mean, it's just this blighted piece of junk that just has such an eyesore on the city, and it, it just... It's just like the symbol of a hopelessness. I mean, it's like, because it's so big and so terrible looking. Anyway, been like that for a long time. Well, now what's happening, I heard, this is just what I heard on the news, that they applied for a, um, a permit to, to put in a freight elevator. And the reason why they want to put in a freight elevator in this big, giant, abandoned building is so they can take roofing supplies to the roof to fix the roof and put the windows back in. And you know what that means? That means they're going to start opening the place up again. And they're going to fix it up. And instead of it being an eyesore, it'll be a good place to be again. Well, I'm all about that. So hats off to Mayor Mike Duggan. Anybody else that's trying to make a positive difference down there. You know, I don't live down in Detroit anymore. I get down as often as I can. You know, there's still cool restaurants. And I have some friends down there. And, you know, we go as often as we can. You know, the music scene's still great. But, uh, you know, I live I live up here now, so, I don't know. Maybe I'll get with the Shea Show and see if I can, you know, buy a house and get a rental in there, but he's going to have to run that rental property because I'm not. So there you go. So that is my, I don't know how long, what do you got, 23 minutes? Me ranting and talking about nothing. My heart still belongs to the city of Detroit. It always will. You know, I feel a connection, more of a connection there than I do with, you know, in Flint or any other city because, you know, I lived there for many years. And um, I really do hope the best because I'll tell you what, a lot of our cities are in, you know, similar shape. And if Detroit does make a comeback, our cities will make a comeback also. Our other cities, Saginaw and Lansing and Flint and Pontiac and Benton Harbor and, you know, uh, Lansing, I think I said Lansing, uh, you know, I mean, all of our major cities are in the same, same condition. They're all like Detroit style. Detroit just is the one that makes all the news. I'm not sure why Detroit, probably because it's the biggest of the cities, but I'm not, you know, and, you know, Flint, Michigan, you know, it's like, it's always like Flint, some nerd capital, and then then it was Detroit, and then it was Flint, then it was Detroit, then it was Flint, to go back and forth with the murder capital thing. Well, that shit needs to stop. I'll tell you what, if you have a gun, that doesn't necessarily mean that you are safe. I'll tell you what, you better not brandish that weapon in front of somebody who's got a gun because you will be the first person shot, I'm telling you right now. That will happen. 
you better hide if you got a concealed weapon you better hide that sucker and make sure or hide yourself because if you ever have to shoot at anybody and hopefully you never do uh, you better make sure that you know I mean I got nothing against concealed weapons I'll tell you what though oh and listen to this um, Thomas and John I want to tell you about something stupid that's happening in the US right now there is something called uh, open carry I don't know if you heard about this open carry is this really 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 stupid policy that uh, some of the more uh, gun enthusiastic people seem to be all about and here's what it is you get yourself a rifle or an AK-47 or you know any kind of like you know big weapon and then you walk around public places with it problem is the cops can't tell if you're just a nutbag or if you're like a gun enthusiast you can't tell you know why because nutbags and gun enthusiasts look exactly the same when they're walking around with weapons and I'm you know and I don't know about you I don't know if you heard all this stuff about all these school shootings and things like that that are happening but it's like we got all these guns and then all this crap keeps happening you know like teenagers keep getting hold of their parents guns because apparently I don't know because they can't lock them up or whatever by the way if you have a gun and you have teenagers make sure you lock the damn things up please because I'm it's just like you know and it's just this cowardly thing to do you go into a school unarmed kids you shoot a bunch of kids and then you shoot yourself so you don't have to pay the consequences well what the hell is that about Look, Junior, just save us all the trouble. Shoot yourself at home. And open carry is stupid. That needs to stop. I'm all for gun rights, but you guys are taking it too far. I mean, way too far. I mean, I have a kitchen knife, but I don't walk around with it, you know, with, with holding onto it at Walmart, you know, or wherever you go. You don't just go to the shopping mall and you just have, like, a kitchen knife sticking out. You know, you just walk around, you'd be arrested. Well, open carry should be no different. You have gun rights, fine. You guys want to keep your guns, fine. Just make sure you lock them up. Make sure you know how you use them. And don't wander around the shopping mall with them. That's just stupid. Something bad's going to happen. I just know it. And these cowboys are just ready for something to happen. It'd be like, they're just raring to go. They're just waiting for somebody to, to go nuts. So, you know, and, and show up with a weapon somewhere so they can all shoot them. It's just, it's just, a, it's just a powder keg. It's bad things waiting to happen. I mean... I love the United States. It's a great place to be. And the more I, you know, read about a lot of other countries, not all, but a lot of other countries, it's like, you know, I realize how great this place is. You know, I mean, what is it, Pakistan, where the, uh, you know, they're, they're sentenced the lady to death because, like, she's a Christian and she's not a Muslim or something. I mean, what the heck is that about? I mean, what is that? You know, and... And, and, you know, and, and some of the, I think Afghanistan is another country like that where, you know, a girl is like, they stoned her to death. Her, her family came and found her to kill her with like sticks and rocks and stuff because she might have, and I don't mean she did, or I mean she may have talked to a boy on the telephone. Well, she's a teenager. Of course she's going to do that. You know, what, maybe it's time you got out the Stone Age, man. Here in the United States, yeah, we got problems. I mean, the place ain't perfect. Believe me, it's not perfect at all. But it's the best we got, and it's definitely the greatest place in the world. A lot of freedom. We can talk about stuff. You know, we got the, what is it, uh, ISIS trying to take over Iraq. And now they're saying that, what are they, they're the uh, brothers of Islam, and they, and they represent every Muslim or Islamic person in the world now. No, they don't. I've met a lot of Muslim people that are really cool. I have. I've met a lot of Muslim people that are actually really, really cool people. It's just the nutcases that always make the news. You know, there, there's no news in a nice person. You know, if you're just a nice Muslim person or Islamic or whatever it is, I don't know, and you just mind your own business and you practice your own religion and you don't bother anybody and you don't shoot a bunch of people and, and cause a bunch of trouble, you never make the news. You know why? Because it's boring. Nobody's going to pay attention to you being a cool guy. But it happens more often than you might think. I've met a lot of Muslims. I've met a lot of Muslims that are really super cool. And i got no problem with it. I've also, for the record, met a lot of Hindus, a lot of Christians, a lot of, uh, I don't know, you name it. I've named, I meet everybody. And they've all been really cool to me. You know, I don't have too many problems with Christians. I get a lot of people that, you know, give Christianity a bad rap, too. Where it's like, you know, you know, you're trying to push your religion on me and all this kind of jazz and whatever. And yeah, some people are like that. 
you know, we got in, in this country, we've got somebody called Jehovah's Witnesses. Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, they're kind of annoying. Um, they go like door to door and they try to get you con to convert to their religion and they talk your ear off and bother you. Now, I've had a couple come to my door and I just say, look, I'm not interested and go away. And they usually do. But uh, the thing I don't get about being a Jehovah's Witness is, um, now I don't know a heck of a lot about their religion. And, and more power to them if they want to do that, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. But uh, it, it's like, I think they have a limit on how many people can get into heaven, like at 100,000 or 10,000 or some kind of level like that. So the only thing I can't figure out is why they would want to like have more people in their religion when only so many of them are going to heaven. That doesn't make any sense. So anyway, I don't know. I don't Like I said, I don't know a heck of a lot about it. All I know is I don't want them knock on my door. You probably don't get Jehovah's Witnesses over there, over in Turkey. I'll bet you you don't. Lucky you. <laughs> so anyway. Anybody, uh, let's see. How long have I been talking here? Like half an hour, good lord. Just blah, 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 on and on and on. Did anybody actually watch these videos? <laughs> so we're just doing some more driving. You guys are driving along with me. Do a lot of driving on this job. I guess I got my hand on the wheels. Don't worry. No worries. I'm not looking through the visor. I'm not even looking at this video, so hopefully it's not all jumpy and jerky. I'm just recording and talking. Kind of a new hobby. So anyway, Mindstorm uh, rules. I like them. Um, some of my um, friends, I got a friend over in uh, uh, Uruguay who wants to get a copy of uh, my old band Death Threat. That's cool. Um, around the Flint area, there's a, there's a lot of cool bands coming out of that area. I really like uh, a band called Sleepless Malice. They're really good guys. You know, I think they deserve a break. I showed up to a record label friend of mine, but uh, he wasn't into it. He said they're old school. I don't know why he thinks they're old school. I don't think they're old school at all, but whatever. He runs a record company. What the heck do I know? Anyway, we're just... Uh, where we're at is uh, we're in the thumb of Michigan. Um, Michigan looks like a mitten. Like if you actually have a mitten on... So, like, right here, see, like that? See the thumb right there? That's where we are. Like, right there. See the thumb? That's the shape of my state. And uh, whenever I listen to one of these uh, these long-talking rants of mine, I realize how much of a Michigan accent I have. I never noticed it before until I heard my voice back, like, for, you know, talking a lot of times, like, in the car, you know, in the car. It's like, wow. <laughs> do I really talk like that? Heck yeah, I do. Anyway, we can travel with me. I suppose I could turn the radio on and then get this whole thing banned in uh, in Germany. You know what's funny? I had this uh, video banned in Germany uh, because uh, because I turned the radio on. There's a radio in this in this van, and it has music coming out of it sometimes. But if your video has music coming out of it, it's banned in Germany, like automatically. I even had a German friend like check it out. I was like, hey man, you know, can you check this out? He's like, I can't see it. Can't see it. Like, well, that's weird. I noticed they had a flag on it when I was looking up my videos and stuff, and it was like, you know, this is this copyrighted material on it. It's like, well, it's a radio, dude. What do you want from me? People have radios in their lives, okay? You don't need to censor everything. So, anyway, I don't know if you guys are watching the World Cup. I'm not. I'm not really a sports fan. I have nothing against sports, I just am not interested in them. I've tried to be, but it just isn't going to happen. <laughs> I just don't care about sports, never have, never will. I guess soccer is really, really big overseas. It's not really that big here. Most of the media is kind of like, yeah, who cares about soccer, whatever, you know. Everybody cares about football, basketball, baseball, uh, that kind of stuff. But only men's. If you're in the women's league, it doesn't get very much attention, which I think is a bit, uh, a bit of a 
double standard, really. Football seems to get the most attention. Everybody likes football, especially here. Everybody loves football. They gotta watch this. They got video games playing football. And it's like overseas, nobody gives a flying crap about American football. But here, I mean, here it's a zillion dollar business. And, you know, if you're a football player, you make millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars and everybody knows your name and they interview you and there's all this stuff and everything. And overseas, they could give two craps about that, which is funny to me. I watch a lot of shows from England. It's a lot of, to me, it's interesting about what is so important here in the States, which overseas nobody gives two craps about, you know, <laughs> just, which is hilarious to me. So, anyway, this is kind of a long one. I guess we'll kind of go for broke here. Let's keep talking. That's something to do. You see the Michigan countryside. It's kind of nice. We like it. This winter was brutal. Looks like they're fixing a lot of the roads, though, finally. Finally got enough, uh, you know, enough money and enough people screaming about it. They just get the roads fixed. Excuse me. It's Monday. Monday has been kind of a long day. Worked about 10 hours, I think, today. And what do we got? We got a police officer. Got somebody pulled over. countryside who knows maybe one of these days you guys will come to visit sounds like to me that you guys are going to try to make it out to California first one of these days I've never actually been to California the one thing you got to know about the United States is it's big I mean it's real big I mean it's a big place and, and the thing about the United States is that because it's such a big country there's different sections that things are different like, uh, California, for example, is like our weird, whacked-out cousin, you know? Like, every, you know, things that happen in California don't happen here, and they got a lot of pollution laws that we don't have here, and, and uh, you know, everybody drives a foreign car over there. You know, this is Michigan. I mean, that's a Toyota up in front of us. But, you know, a lot of people around here drive American-made cars because this is Michigan, and Detroit was the Motor City, and the big three, which is Ford, Chrysler, and, and uh, Chevrolet, or General Motors, rather, um, that's, that's how you make your living. And if you don't make your living off of being, you know, in, in a car, or, I mean, in, in a car company, you make your living off of uh, other people who do, you know, people that work for the car company, people that, uh, you know, that's how they make their, their living, and then they spend money on whatever, groceries, or, you know, services like ours, or what have you. Hey, look, there's a nice pond over there. farmland and over on this side it's farm implements see farm equipment for sale there's a crane a bunch of tractors and things there's a travel trailer in England I guess they call those caravans it's a caravan I guess in England a lot of people hate those things because they block up traffic but here it doesn't really matter. Our roads are a lot bigger. Our cars are a lot bigger. Um, and plus we have not a lot of winding roads. <laughs> we have like, I mean, how, I've been on a straight road for how long now? I've been talking to you for how long? So there's a lot of that. I'm talking now 38 minutes. Have you seen a curve in this road? It haven't been a one. Michigan is different than Florida. Florida is a lot hotter than Michigan, even though it is also a peninsula. Our state is completely surrounded by water, except for at the bottom, which makes it a peninsula. Same with Florida. You know, Florida gets hurricanes. We don't get those here. We do get tornadoes, but they're kind of only in certain seasons. Um, Florida also is only certain seasons. The only thing is that um, the coast seems to get ripped up 
I always think it's funny when these rich people like buy homes on the coast and it's like then their home is like floating away like you know two years later it's like well what'd you expect man you're living right out of the water I mean come on if you get a tsunami you're done what also cracks me up this is I'll tell you what this is like this is something I don't like about Americans especially rich Americans um, what they'll do is like they'll go to a place like that's kind of a little bit third world say like Mexico or you know Costa Rica or something like that and then and then they go and they nitpick these houses like this is going to be we're, we're going to move to Mexico it's like you know or, or this island you know country or something and it's like and then they you know I watch these TV shows where these rich people buy these houses and stuff and it's like they turn up their nose at every property and go like oh well that's not good enough and that's not good enough and you know, this is outdated, out of style, and you know what's going to happen. You know that these rich people, what's going to happen when the revolution happens is their heads are going to be the ones on sticks out on the beach. It's like, you know, look, you got to understand where you're living, man. There's, you know, it's not like the United States, okay? It's not like you're going to be, like, uh, safe. <laughs> you know, you think you are, but you probably are not going to be. And especially if any they get any kind of turmoil or trouble, good luck with that. Good luck with that. Go visit other countries. That's fine. That's great. You got a vacation home? Absolutely. No problem. They sure they need the money over there. That's great. But when you go live in, you know, other countries that's not like England or Europe or something like that, you live in like a third world country, it's like, yeah, I'm sure your dollar will go far, but boy, you are taking a chance. And especially if you're an uppity rich person where it's like, you know, the kitchen that was only built 10 years ago isn't good enough for you. That kind of crap is like, you know, you, you're going to... is a Christian church right there. I'm not sure exactly if what they are, if they're Episcopalian or if they're just uh, non-denominational or they're uh, just, I'm not sure. My dad belongs to a Methodist church. Methodist is like a, another kind of a Christian religion out here. I'm not that religious myself, but uh, I have nothing against it. I'm not one of those guys that are going to get online and blah, blah, blah. The only time I get mad at Christians is if they're like really overzealous and start quoting Bible stuff at you and, and being a, just a, pay, a big pain in the ass. I don't like that. But, you know, if you want to practice your faith, I'm totally cool with it. If it gives you, uh, you know, a sense of inner peace and you're not preaching at everybody, I don't think there's any harm in that. I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. I have nothing against it. My personal religious upbringing was, uh, you know, um, we would go Sunday to church to the Methodist church. Now, my wife, on the other hand, she went to a Catholic school where they basically would make you go to church like every day. She told me she's never set foot in a church ever again. As for me, I don't have a problem with it. When you're, I was a Methodist as a kid, everything was fine. Uh, Sunday school was pretty cool. Vacation Bible school was great. Um, when I was a teenager, uh, we, I would go to camps and stuff during the summer, you know, and then, you know, whatever camp they had, confirmation camp or prayer camp or whatever camp, it was a little religious theme, but it was good, you know, had a lot of fun, made a lot of friends, I got nothing bad to say, I got nothing bad to say about the Methodist religion, churches, organizations, or otherwise, they were good people, they treated me just fine, I got nothing bad to say, so all these people that have got like some kind of like trauma in their past with, you know, priests touching them or whatever other god awful thing happened, I got nothing. I got nothing, and which I'm so glad for. As a teenager, they had youth groups, they had dances. Um, back in the 80s, there was this dumb stuff, this dumb stuff going around where they thought that uh, if you played records backwards, which is really stupid anyway, um, that they were satanic messages on them. So they play the records backwards and they'd be like, <laughs> and they'd say, well, that, would be, that guy said Satan or something. And it was a really ridiculous argument, and it was so dumb. Well, the problem with all that, I mean, other than the obvious, is that, you know, that's just stupid. Well, at our church, they said, okay, well, let's check it out. You know, they actually got a tape recorder that could actually, it was actually possible to play some of these backwards things, you know, these forward things backwards. And um, what happened was, is uh, we heard a bunch of gibberish, and we all came to the conclusion that that was a bunch of crap. The adults did not push anything on us as far as, like, you know, this is religion, and you know, and you gotta be like this, and it, it was none of that. They just said, okay, let's see if it was the real deal or not. And we all came to the conclusion that it was not. The adults, you know, I give them their proper respect for that. They didn't, 
push anything on us. They told us what was what. They told us all about it. And then they let us make up our own minds. Good job to them. Um, later on, let's see, I went to uh, rock climbing one time, went backpacking for two weeks. That was harrowing. I thought we were going to die. <laughs> it was pretty intense. Not because of the religious stuff, but because the backpacking was pretty harsh. I enjoyed it, but ooh, that was tough. Um, you know, met girls, went on dances. I mean, you know, not a bad way to be. Not bad at all. So hats off to you, um, Methodist religion and any other religion that uh, takes care of their own. I mean, good stuff. Not bad. I'm surprised I don't uh, go to church more often, but... Uh, like I said, my wife's not that into it, so, you know, that's fine. Maybe when I get older, I'll get more into it. My dad volunteers at the, uh, the Lake Orient United Methodist Church, so he's up there doing that, helping out people, and taking part in Shalom. Shalom is a, uh, it's, uh, they fix up poor people's houses that can't afford it. A real nice thing to do. I worked, I did some work on it, like, back when I was younger. It, you know, it's hard work, but it makes you feel good at the end of the day. Uh, my Uncle Danny lives down in Kentucky. Yeah, talk about different. Um, Kentucky is way different than Michigan. It's like the food's different and the way people talk is different. Now, you're listening to me. I'm talking with a Michigan accent, which, like I said before, I never notice until I hear myself blah, 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 blah for an hour like I've been doing. Um, when you when you go down south, you know, Virginia or whatever, like they, they have a tendency to talk like this. So the, the accent... Is uh, is different, and sometimes I can't understand what heck they're saying. But my relatives are from down there, so what's real funny is if I if I spend any time with my southern talking relatives, I end up talking like this for a while too. I don't know if you understood what I just said, but uh, that's a southern accent. Some people like to make fun of it. I think it's kind of cool actually, and southern cooking is amazing. We can get Texas to kind of lay off with that uh, with that whole. Uh, uh, open carry thing I, I think we'd all survive <laughs> to, to the next millennium <laughs> they're big on guns down there in Texas not that they're not big here I mean this is Michigan people love their guns they really do people love their guns I'm not real fond of them myself I really don't have a bunch of affection for guns I've seen way too many guns used at way too many people down in Detroit you really want to not like guns? Spend some time in Detroit. And don't give me that crap about, oh, well, all the guns down there are illegal. No, they're not. No, they're not. Most of the guns down there were bought legally. Unfortunately, they're used for a lot of stupid stuff. I heard this incident the other day. These two guys, I, this wasn't in Detroit, but these two guys, um, they both had concealed weapons. You know, legal, had permits. They had some road rage. Road rage is where you're angry at each other in a, in a car. Okay, you, you're driving in two cars and you guys are arguing on the road. So they pulled over and they both pulled their guns and shot each other. Now they're dead. What the hell is that? Stupid is what it is. So just because you were hacked off of somebody, you're going to take out a gun and shoot them? I mean, what the hell is that? You know, that crap needs to end. I think this country and especially Detroit and all of our cities would be a much better place to live if that kind of garbage didn't happen. Where you didn't sell your difference by shooting people. I mean, that's dumb. How many shooting deaths do they have in England? Like none? Like zero? They're not legal there. I don't think that'd be the best course of action for us because I'm telling you right now, you'd have a hell of a time. People around here... Well, not everybody, but there's a lot of people around here that think that Obama is going to go door to door and with a, some kind of like gun squad and take everybody's guns and search the house for guns and that kind of crap. And that's just, I'm telling you right now, that's not going to happen. So anyway, so anyway, I am not going to show you where I work because, um, you know, that's kind of, you got to kind of keep that stuff on the down low. So anyway, hope you enjoyed uh, my video, guys, and I'll make another one soon. Bye.